Hi guys, today I'm joined by Stephanie Mushbahani Constance, who is a co-founder of Patero Tech and has a P and is a PhD student in physiology. Welcome. Thanks. Nice so, to be here. yeah, no problem. So, Stephanie, can you explain what Patero Tech is? Sure. So, uh, I'm a PhD student, like you said, in physiology at McGill, and I study a venom from this fish called the lionfish. And this venom causes excruciating pain. And I study this venom to understand how it causes pain. And uh, through my research, we found a way to block the pain caused by this venom. So when people get stung by lionfish, they feel excruciating pain. And we found a way to block this pain. And uh, my PhD supervisor and I decided to co-found Perotech, which is our startup, uh, so that we could commercialize this treatment that we invented to, to treat lionfish stings. So the treatment itself is called Sting Master. It's sold by uh, Terotech, and it's an over-the-counter ointment uh, that blocks the pain caused by lionfish stings. But since we formulated it for one, one of the most painful stings in the ocean, uh, it also works for jellyfish stings, like less severe stings like jellyfish stings, sea lice stings, fire coral stings, etc. That's great. And so... Are there any other products like um, Stingmaster in the market currently? Uh, not quite. It's kind of like an afterbite for the ocean, but uh, aquatic stings have kind of been ignored by the sting treatment kind of industry. So it's uh, pretty unique in that way. Yeah, I can imagine. And so can you explain how the venom in a lionfish or a jellyfish work? Sure. So uh, lionfish uh, have these spines on their back that are very long, like they can be almost like 12, 15 centimeters, depending on the size of the lionfish. And there are about 12 to 13 of them that have venom in them. And inside of these spines, there, there are grooves. And uh, that's where the venom gland tissue is. And it produces this venom um, that causes a lot of pain. So venoms are in general kind of cocktails of molecules. And each molecule in this cocktail has its job. So for example, in lionfish venom, there are some molecules who exclusively exist to act on your nervous system to cause pain. Other molecules that sort of destroy the tissue so that the pain causing toxins can penetrate better. And then other molecules that, you know, sort of uh, promote inflammation and things like that. So uh, what happens is that when you get stung by a lionfish, you get poked by these spines that are made of cartilage and it breaks your skin and the venom flows into your, your wound. And um, the pain causing toxins will bind to receptors, which are like tiny gates on the ends of nerve endings, and they'll activate these nerve endings. And what happens is that then you have a pain signal being transmitted through your nerve endings towards your spinal cord up to your brain to tell you that you're in pain. Uh, so basically the, the venom has evolved to cause pain really well. It's uh, evolved to be a defense mechanism. Lionfish don't really use it to hunt. Uh, typically venoms that are used to hunt are like paralytic venoms. So they'll paralyze victims or kill victims instead of just causing pain. This has really like evolved to be a deterrent. And you did just talk about um, how it attacks nerve endings. So can these stings be fatal? Are they like actually really toxic? So they're, they're not fatal. They just cause a lot of pain. So um, what I was saying was that like lionfish evolved this defense mechanism since they're not really a like a, they don't have teeth. They don't, they're not able to attack things with really their mouths. So they use these spines as sort of like chemical weapons to deter bigger fish from eating them. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not yeah. toxic to humans. Got it. Got it. And so what research did you have to go into when you're um, looking into uh, starting a startup? So um, in terms of research, you mean scientific research or like mm -hmm. business research? Just like researching about the venom and how you would be able to stop it. Sure. So uh, this startup was sort of not my first goal when I started research. So uh, I did my undergraduate degree also in physiology at McGill University. And uh, I wanted to go into research because I'm just really interested by research. And I started working on lionfish venom uh, as my undergraduate research project. Uh, and we published a study that just sort of looked at generally what kinds of pain are caused by lionfish venom. So the lab that I'm doing my PhD in is specifically a pain lab that studies the molecular and cellular mechanisms of pain and how we sense touch. So um, I was really just studying this venom to understand why it causes pain purely from a scientific interest point of view and as my PhD. And it was sort of just like we happened upon this uh, discovery that could be commercialized and people really wanted. So in uh, 2018, I was at a conference that's called the Lionfish Summit. So 
Uh, something I didn't mention is that the lionfish are a really invasive species in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. And people in, for example, like Florida, Texas, Louisiana, will actually hunt lionfish, so they'll spearfish them to control the populations because they just eat every kind of fish that are smaller than them. And uh, so I was at one of these conferences where people were discussing the population spread of lionfish and very few people study lionfish venom. I was the only person at this conference talking about it. And people just kept coming up to me and saying, you know, you have to invent a cure for lionfish stings because they are really very painful. It's, um, you know, having injected myself with lionfish venom before, it feels like someone is sticking a needle in your hand and just like wiggling it around. It's really uncomfortable. So the, the research that I did uh, was more on the neuroscience side of things. So my, uh, my PhD is really focused in neurophysiology of pain. So I study the peripheral nervous system and I do experiments on uh, mice, like behavioral experiments, but mostly uh, experiments on cells. So they're called in vitro experiments. And I do a lot of uh, electrophysiology. So um, as you may know, like neurons, so brain cells or nerve cells in the peripheral nervous system, talk to each other in uh, sort of like the language of electricity. So the way that you can understand how the nervous system is being activated is if you measure the uh, sort of electrical, um, like the voltage across the cell membrane uh, in order to understand how they're being activated. So a lot of my experiments involve uh, recording directly from cells uh, to see how they're being activated, what's being activated on their cell membrane and understanding how lionfish venom is causing a pain signal to be transmitted to the brain. Got it. And back to the topic of demand. So have you found like a large amount of demand or necessity for a remedy for these aquatic stings? Yeah, so uh, especially for lionfish stings, there's really no treatment option. Uh, some people use hot water as a remedy. So uh, there are the pain causing toxin, uh, something we showed actually in, in my paper in 2018 was uh, that the pain causing toxin in lionfish venom is heat sensitive. So if you use hot water, it can help break down the toxins that cause pain. But the problem with that is that it's very slow pain relief and very minimal because usually when people use hot water, it's a while after they've been stung. So um, there really is a huge hole in the market in terms of treating lionfish stings. Uh, but even more generally, you know, jellyfish stings happen to, I think the most recent number I saw is like 100 million people a year get stung by jellyfish uh, in tourist destinations and diving uh, trips and so on and so forth. So uh, having an instant pain relieving cream for that, uh, there has been pretty, is a pretty empty market. Mm -hmm. so it's yeah. Pretty high demand. Yeah. And so uh, more about the product, can you explain the effectiveness of it? Have you seen any like um, data that shows the effectiveness of Sting Master? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I've done these, a lot of these experiments myself. Uh, before we you know, commercialized the product, we did a lot of experiments. And uh, in the lab, what we, what we actually did is that we looked um, specifically at one ingredient. So mm -hmm. uh, in order for our product to be an over-the-counter cream, the FDA has a list of approved ingredients. It's called an OTC monograph. So let's say you wanted to make an over-the-counter cream that treats pain. There's a list of ingredients that are approved for pain treatments. So we knew we had to include some uh, ingredients from this list in order to be able to say that we treat pain. Um, but the, the real interesting ingredient for our uh, purposes is uh, a molecule that occurs naturally in rhubarb extract. So in my experiments, in my PhD, I was finding ways to block this receptor that lionfish venom targets to activate the nervous system. And uh, a lot of the compounds I were, was using were these synthetic molecules uh, from uh, large pharmaceutical companies. But of course you can't use that in, a, in a, just a cream that's over the counter. You have to go through clinical trials and it's billions of dollars to develop this. So we were looking for an alternative and uh, we actually found this molecule that I, like I was saying that occurs naturally in rhubarb extract that acts in the exact same place in the nervous system as these synthetic molecules. So we tested it extensively on isolated nerve cells from humans and from mice, looking at how um, they can block their activation by lionfish venom. And then we, of course, did tests once it was in the cream with, uh, with mice and um, making sure that it works before we ever went into development. Uh, and then now that the product's on the market, we have testimonials from people who've used the product and tell us how much they love it. 
uh, and people who use it for lionfish stings, jellyfish stings, far coral, sea lice, so you name it, it's been used for that. So it's, uh, it's nice to see that everyone sort of agrees with the science. That's great. Yeah. And so um, is there only specific uh, animals that can, that the sting master can treat like the venom of just lionfish or aquatic animals, or can the molecules from the rhubarb extract also um, block different toxins from animals like cobras or just different animals? So in the evolution of venoms, uh, a lot of, you know, venoms evolved separately in a lot of different places. So they evolved on land and things like cobras, insects. They also evolved in the water and, um, place it like animals that are venomous that are clo that are closely related have very similar venoms so snake venoms have sort of traits that are very specific to snake venoms insect venoms have traits specific to snake uh, to insect venoms and the same is true for aquatic venoms so uh, the venoms themselves are very different between things from the ocean and things from snakes so I don't think necessarily that sting master would work for snake venoms um, but it could certainly work for you know things like mosquito bites uh, we're still we're still doing tests and gathering testimonials, but uh, you know it looks very promising that we're that it's able to help a lot with mosquito bites. The reason for that is um, that pain and itch are very related, uh, like from a nervous system point of view, they're very related phenomena. So the molecules in the rhubarb extract that we use in our um, in our ointment actually target cells that transmit pain and itch information. So if you silence these cells very quickly and early on, it can help like in a sting event, it can help with sort of longitude, longitudinal itch. So for example, if you've been stung by a mosquito, uh, they always tell you don't scratch it because the more you scratch it, the itchier it becomes. And if you can prevent this itch from starting in the first place, or you can stop the itch very early on, then you stop the person from continuing to itch and then you stop the itch altogether. So um, the cream would be effective for that, but we're still looking into it to make sure Got we it. have the data for it. And so will Paterotech continue to focus more on aquatic stings or are you guys going to branch out to different venoms or poisons? Um, I don't know, we'll have, to, we'll have to see. We only launched the product in November, 2020, so it's still very young. Uh, we definitely wanna sort of flush out the aquatic stings and uh, see what we can do there and make sure that we are hitting all the markets. Right now we're only sold in Canada and the US, so we would love to go more international uh, to other countries and other markets because jellyfish, sea lice, uh, things like that are present across the world. So uh, we'd love to have that product be available a little bit more broadly, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. And one of my final questions is, can you tell me the difference between poisonous animals and venomous animals? Of course. So uh, poisonous animals, for example, would be like an animal where if you eat its flesh, for example, uh, you would die from it. But a venomous animal, so you would have to ingest that animal. Uh, a venomous animal can uh, attack you and inject you with venom uh, without you having to consume it. So for example, a snake is venomous because it can bite you and inject its venom into you. Uh, but it's not poisonous because you wouldn't be ingesting a snake and ingesting its venom in that way. So typically a poison is something that you consume and a venom is something that is sort of you're attacked with. That's why, for example, you have poison control. It's because usually it's something that you consume when you call poison control. They don't, um, the, it's, it's not like venom control. Um, but the sometimes there are like gray zones. So for example, there are some snakes that are considered poisonous because it's like on their, they hold their venom on their skin and it's only when they're ingested that they kill an animal, but it's also considered a venom. But yeah, typically poisons are things you consume. Venoms are things that you're injected with. Got it. Well, thanks for the explanation and thank you for joining me today. So again, I was joined by Stephanie Mutubani Constance, who's a co-founder of Patero Tech and is a PhD student in physiology. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks. Thanks.